we slide and shift the supply curve. So those are the uh, key areas and key things to remember there. Here we go. It's always exciting to kind of get rid of one of those. Now we're going to look at supply and demand and how they function at equilibrium. Okay, so the, the basic idea of this section is to describe what markets do when surpluses and shortages exist. So this is another topic heading in your redacted notes. And so what I'm going to do right here is actually I'm going to put two graphs side by side. So we've got Q, P, Q, and P. And I'm going to show both of these markets um, looking roughly the same. So here's demand, here's supply, here's an equilibrium, here's an equilibrium, here's an equilibrium price, here's an equilibrium price, here's an equilibrium quantity, and here's an equilibrium quantity. I'm just basically saying that here's a market here, here's a market here. Both of them have a tendency to end up at roughly the same price. And now I want to show you two very different things happening in these marketplaces. Uh, and we'll think about how the market forces are going to try to react when a price ends up being a little bit higher or lower than the actual equilibrium price. So let's start over here in this market. Now, I think there's a tendency when you're first learning economics to think, well, well markets must be in equilibrium. No, markets don't know what the equilibrium price is. All that markets know is there is some demand and some supply. And these forces are going to try to balance each other out. That's what markets know. Okay, So in this market right here, this would be the point where the market would actually create the same number of sellers as the same number of buyers. But let's suppose that the price is high. Right? Now, how's the market going to get to this? That's the interesting question. If the price is high, let's go along and see what happens. And the first thing we would see at this high price is we'd come along, we'd hit the demand curve, and we'd see that the quantity demanded is low. That should make sense to you, right? If the price is high, you and I don't want to buy very much of it. But if the price is high, Sellers think to themselves, that's a really good price. We'd love to be able to sell at that price. So the amount that they would supply is much larger. All right, so now what do we have? We've got the amount that sellers are going to supply being much greater than the amount demanded. And that right there is a surplus of the good. And this gets back to the animal trading game that we did, right? So think back to the, all those aardvarks that were left over. Right? If sellers had way more aardvarks than the number of aardvarks that people wanted to buy, there was a surplus of aardvarks. What do we say would happen the next period when the, uh, the game was played again? How many aardvarks would be brought to the marketplace if you couldn't sell the ones you had last time? And we all agreed that if you were a seller, you'd say, I'm not bringing any more aardvarks, right? And so if the sellers start adjusting Right? Because they can't sell all of these. There's a huge surplus left over. If they start adjusting the price downward, right, at the same time, right, what's going to happen is that as the price falls along the demand curve, more people are going to be willing to buy them. Right? So sellers are going to start saying, hey, I'll take less for aardvarks. And as soon as they start saying, I'll take less for aardvarks, some buyers to say, well, I'll buy a few more aardvarks. And this process here, of sellers lowering the price and this encouraging buyers to buy more continues until we get to the equilibrium. All right? so, so what I'm saying here is if a market happens to have a surplus that there's going to be an adjustment process that takes place through the lowering of price and once the price finds its way down to the equilibrium point then all of a sudden the surplus goes away. That's how market, markets resolve surpluses. Let's do the same thing over here. That's why I have this other graph for us to look at. Now let's imagine that for whatever reason, the price is too low. Okay, so let's go through the same process and you can kind of reason ahead here while I do this. So now the price is low. So here we go. The first thing we come to is the supply curve. And the quantity supplied is going to be small. 
right? Because the price is low, so there's not much profit in it for sellers. Sellers don't want to make very much of this good. But if the price is low, notice that the quantity demanded is going to be high, right? You and I love low prices. We want to buy a lot of it. So that means in this case that we've got a shortage. And there aren't enough goods to go around. Now we can think to back to the game uh, and all the efforts trying to find lions, which ran out really quickly, right, in our trading game. Right? So there were a shortage of lions, right? And what does that mean? Well, in the game itself, it just means there was a shortage, right? But the next time period, if you could come back with more of something, you'd come back with more lines, right? Because they were really valuable, right? So sellers say, hey, we're going to increase our supply, right? And they also know what? That there was a shortage of lines so they can bid up the price. So as the price gets bid up, sellers are going to bring more. And as the price of lines increases, consumers are going to demand less. And this process continues until we find the equilibrium. So now we have the price rising. This is why we talk about prices and surpluses and shortages. It's not that surpluses and shortages can't exist or there's something wrong about them. It's actually the opposite, that surpluses and shortages convey information about the, where the current price is relative to what it should be. So when there's a surplus, the information that's conveyed is that the price is too high and you're going to have to drop it, right, if you want to be able to sell everything that you produced. Over here, when there's a shortage, the information that's conveyed is that the price is too low and you want to raise the price in order to be able to achieve uh, the equilibrium. So, so that's why we want to kind of think about it this way, and that's how markets resolve uh, these imbalances that exist in the marketplace. Okay, that's another one of our ideas. Yeah.